Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Meta's stock, also known as Facebook, ticker symbol META. Now, the reason we're doing this analysis is because over the past year, Facebook's Meta stock is down about 70% year over year. So clearly, this stock is down huge. Now, Meta is actually one of the companies that I personally own, and I bought my shares in the low 180 range. I averaged down to that, so I bought a little above that, and then later on in the year, I bought a little bit, low, little bit below that. But recently, a lot has changed. There's been some huge business updates, and the stock tanked because of it. Just a couple days ago, Meta came out with their earnings, and the stock really pulled back, making rising, bringing up the question, do we still want to own this stock? Because what I don't want to do is I don't want good money chasing bad money. I have no issue selling the stock if the investment thesis has changed. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the business, the update on Meta's business, what they came out with in the most recent earnings calls, what the outlook looks like, how, how are we expecting those the numbers to play out over the coming years, and ultimately, what is the, the stock worth, and do we think we should either sell out, or should we perhaps buy even more down at these lower levels? Now, before we jump into that, let me tell you real quick about a website that we're building where it will calculate the fair value for all different types of stock using a bunch of different valuation methods. Now, we already built the discounted cash flow calculator. That's in beta right now, but we plan on adding all these different valuation methods plus more. That way we can one day value every type of company. I'll show you an example later when we look at the fair value of Meta stock. But for now, let's jump into the business of Meta and how they break their business into two primary segments. So their largest segment is their family of apps segment, which generated about 98% of total revenue looking at the past four quarters. It was a, about $116 billion in revenue. Now, the family of apps, the primary drivers of that revenue is Facebook, the website, uh, the, their Instagram platform, their messenger platform, and then their WhatsApp platform. Those are the four primary drivers of this revenue. Most of that money comes in via advertising revenue. That was one of the key drivers for why I wanted to invest in this stock. They get more than, they got a couple billion users on a daily basis jumping onto one of these platforms and a lot of people and businesses rely on it. So that's been sort of the basis of why I thought that they had somewhat of a moat around, especially around social media. Their smallest segment is what they call Reality Labs. So their Reality Labs segment accounted for about 2% of total revenue in the past four quarters, which was about $2.5 billion. Now, this is where they put the whole metaverse, which is sort of the future of what they're banking on or one of the future things that they're banking on. But before we go too far into that, I think it makes more sense to look at some of the recent news to see how this plays into it. So... One big thing that came out in the most recent quarter was their increase in capital expenditures. And an increase in capital expenditures will lead to lower free cash flow. And ultimately, this is important for, for Meta because the rumors out there, the initial headlines were that a lot of that cap increase in capital expenditures was due to the metaverse and the amount of money that is being pumped into that. And yes, there is a decent amount of money relative to the revenue that they're bringing in. It is not a profitable segment for them, but relative to the re revenue, there's a lot of money going into it, but most of the increases in capital expenditures weren't tied to that. From the research that I've done, most of them were tied to improving their data center capacity as well as improving their network capacity. Now, both of these improvements are tied to improving their AI capacity. Now, AI is artificial intelligence is very important for what Meta is trying to do because it is ultimately morphing, it's helping them deal with a lot of the problems and trying to reignite growth in their family of apps segment. Now, I don't want to just disregard the capital expenditure side of this because that is a very important story for us to understand. So before we jump into the nuances of the pros and cons of Facebook as it stands or Meta as it stands today, let's jump in and look quickly at the capital expenditures. So, the red bars here are actual numbers. These are capital expenditures. Capital expenditures, by the way, are things that you would do if you were building a factory. The building of the factory itself is a capital expenditure. If you're going to put on a new roof, capital expenditure. Buying a new machine, capital expenditure. Hiring employees to work it, 
not capital expenditures, just so we know. It's like the building of the hard assets themselves. So all the money that they're spending on data centers, things like that, are to improve the future functionality. If I said my manufacturing business is putting up five new plants, you know capital expenditures going to go up. Those expenses will be high in the short term, but they should lead to more revenue, more free cash flow, more profits down the line. So that's the theory behind capital expenditures. Now, the green bars here are analyst estimates for capital expenditures. And the interesting part is that over the long run, between if you go out to 2025, 2026, analysts have capital expenditures being right around the $30 billion mark. So they are increasing in the short term, and then they're expecting it to level off more near the $30 billion mark. And then by that point, it should tie in much closer with what revenue is doing from there. Now, we're going to come back to this concept later because this is directly tied to free cash flow and how we calculate the fair value of pretty much any stock. But before we go there, let's jump into the pros and cons of Meta's stock. Today, look at some of the, the nuances that have come out recently. Okay, so let's go through the pros first, and we'll go through the cons. So the biggest pro for Meta's business is the strength of their family of apps segment. Again, these, this segment is including these four business lines. And if we jump real quick back to the pie chart, this is a $116 billion business. This is a very large business with a ton of daily users, with a ton of monthly users. And overall, this is by far one of their biggest strengths. As long as those platforms, as long as they remain dominant there, they remain a fairly reliable business. Then, on top of that, another advantage of Meta's business right now is they've seen good growth over the past few quarters with their Reels business. So Reels is their video playing system within Facebook, within Instagram. And the advantage to it is that it basically allows for a different type of video format. They haven't fully gotten to monetize it, but they have seen a decent amount of growth in the business. If they keep growing that business, much like their core Facebook business a few years ago, they keep growing it. At some point, we expect that they should be able to monetize it. That's sort of the plan. Now, the disadvantage is when we look at their overall business, probably their biggest disadvantage right now on the cons list is the Apple privacy policy update that happened a little bit over a year ago. Now, the reason this Apple privacy update was very important back when it happened was that Ultimately, it allowed users to opt out of being tracked by different applications. So for a company like Meta, who has Facebook or Instagram, and they're trying to sell advertising spots on those platforms, the more information they can have about us, the better. So if they track everything we're doing and what we like and all the stuff we're interested in buying, things like that, well, they can advertise appropriately. Clearly, that advertising is worth a lot of money. Apple, somewhat surprisingly to a lot of the industry, gave people the ability to opt out of that. And just like that, Facebook's business gets significantly slowed down. That ex partially explains why the stock began to fall. Now, what that has forced Meta to do is it has forced them to increase their expenses, recently to increase their expenses, to try to push towards the future. That push towards the future is almost necessary because they have to figure out a way to more dynamically understand people using their own data and the information that they can gather from people without tracking those people when they're not using the app. That is one of the reasons that they're having such a push towards AI in general. That explains their network, uh, their capacity infrastructure that they're putting up, their network infrastructure that they're putting up. They're gearing up to be able to try to more dynamically figure out what ads would be most appropriate for different people. Now, of course, I'm, sh I'm assuming that they also want to connect you with the best people and connect you with the music you like and things like that. I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to work both ways. But from a money perspective, they have to connect advertisers with people that want to buy their product. That's why a company like this can make so much money. Along those same lines, they're also trying to push towards what they see as the future, which is the metaverse. Now, personally, I see the metaverse as part of the future, but I think that that could be a very long time in the making, therefore a long run expense. That is, those are expenses that could be there for a long time before they really add a ton of value. Now, I don't think it's quite as near term that we're going to be there very quickly and that's going to be amazing, but I also don't think it's completely out of the picture. I think the idea, the concept, the seeds that they're planting now have the potential to do good things for the business 
over the long run, as long as the expenses towards that are modestly controlled. I was happy to find in my research that a lot of the increase that they saw in capital expenditures wasn't necessarily just tied to the metaverse. So yes, there's going to be higher capital expenditures in the near term, and yes, that's going to lead to lower free cash flow, but we know now that a lot of that is tied to the strong to the family of apps, which is their legacy business. The numbers that I saw, I believe, had them at about 80% of the increase in capital expenditures were tied to family of apps. And I think that's where they have to focus over the near run. I'm game for putting money into the metaverse, but if they're spending 80% of their CapEx to push towards growing their current business and perhaps take back a bit of the stuff that came off the table with Apple, well, I'm game for that because I think that could regenerate some of their growth. But now let's jump over to the fair value for Meta stock using discount of free cash flow. So this is the website that I had mentioned in, the, in before at the start of the video. And the idea is you punch in the ticker, kicks back the fair value. Now, we went on a little bit further here. Here, we extended out six years instead of our default three years. We also set some custom numbers here where we, I lowered the growth. Typically, we take the five-year average for growth, which was about 30%. I dropped it down to 15, and we dropped down the free cash flow to revenue. Their five-year average for free cash flow to revenue has been about 30%. I dropped it down to 20% to be a bit more conservative we can see we get a fair value of about $193 per share. But when I was looking at these numbers, I had an issue with one of the numbers that I was looking at. I like to, after I do my research, I like to look at all the numbers, see if anything jumps out. Well, this number here jumped out as me, uh, jumped out to me as being excessively high. 50 billion going out to 2025 seems like a really big jump from the previous year. Now, although it seems that way, it's actually not that big of a jump because in 2021, Meta actually put up about 39 billion in free cash flow. So them being at 50 billion in a few years is, you know, it's possible. Now, I actually prefer to be a bit more conservative. So I think it makes more sense to customize this number and just tone it down a bit. And when we customize the number, well, I dropped it down to about $30 billion in free cash flow. The other two numbers that are after that are computer calculated and they use the custom numbers that are over here. Those custom numbers lead to what the computer should use as projections, how it should come up with projections. I think switching the one 2025 number to about 30 billion is much more reasonable. In this scenario, Meta will get back by 2027, they will get back to where they were in 2021 from a free cash flow perspective. Now, of course, that dropped the fair value for the stock. Making those adjustments drops the fair value to about $188 per share. Right now, the stock is trading below $100 per share. So that brings us to the question, should we invest in Meta stock here or should I sell out or what should you do with your position? So here's the real problem that I face. My average price, my average entry price is about $183 per share, give or take. Well, the fair value and we now have at 188. I'd personally love to buy the stock down at this level. This to me is one of those buy and put away for the next 10, 15 years. But with my average price being at 180, I really need to average this down for it to make a ton of sense. So my intention is to try to average down this stock as long as the stock stays below $100 per share. If it stays below $100 per share, I'd like to try to average it down a bit, which I've done with a lot of the stocks that I own but I'd like to try to get this average price down. And I think that Meta stock over the long run could be quite good. Now, just so it's on record, my biggest concern with Meta at this point is their push towards the metaverse. If next quarter or next year, we find out that Meta is moving 80% of their capital expenditures are now going towards the metaverse, well, that the investment is not towards there. I am game for them to figure out the metaverse and try to generate future revenue out of it as long as the majority of their expenses and the majority of the revenue in the near term is coming from their family of apps. As long as they don't make too dramatic of a shift, which it doesn't seem like they are. I listened to their earnings calls. I read through their different uh, announcements, their SEC filings, and it seems like, yes, they are pushing towards trying to figure out the problems that they're having, 
But I don't think that the shift is as dramatic as I thought it was when I first saw it. That is why I think the stock dropped as much as it did recently because people thought that there was a huge dramatic shift towards the metaverse. And I think there was less of that than originally anticipated. So we might see some recovery in the stock over the near term. But for me, I'd like to try to average down here, see if I can stick this one in my back pocket and hold it for a very long time and see how it all plays out. If they're right about the metaverse and it plays out that way, well, this stock could be an enormous gainer. But even if they're not, and it ends up just being their family of apps that drive the business forward, I think it could be, it could provide decent returns, especially from this level. So if you'd like to sign up to get access to this website, I will leave a link in the description below. Like I said, we've got the beta version of the DCF calculator up and running right now, and we're going to be adding different valuation methods very soon. So this website will be able to value all different types of stocks. So if you'd like to sign up, I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.